one. You're live. Right, I am live. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's now four minutes past three, and I'd like to welcome you all to this virtual meeting of Hounslow's licensing panel. I would now like to introduce each of the members and officers uh, this afternoon, that are here this afternoon, one by one. The panel will consist of myself as chair, and my name is Councillor Richard Foote. I'm the chair of the licensing committee, and I represent Hamworth Ward. I'll now uh, ask my two colleagues to introduce themselves. So firstly, I'll ask Adriana. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for participating in this virtual meeting and welcome. I'm Adriana George. I'm a councillor for Bedfont and I represent uh, London Borough of Hounslow also. And I'm a member of the licensing panel. Nice to see you. Right. Um, Hi. That's all. Hi, good afternoon. This is Councillor Afzal Kiani. I represent Hounslow Heath Ward and I'm one of the, the member here in this panel. I'm picking up Adriana's. Uh, I'm sorry, can someone um, turn off the, um, the sound is a bit delayed and someone has it on. So can we turn yeah. the, up, the microphones off, please, once we talk? Yeah, well, it's not ours. I've got to have mine on to talk. Uh, uh, the rest of yours appear to be off. Right, OK, can we uh, now ask the officers to introduce themselves, starting with Rita? Hi, my name's Rita Pancania. I'm the Licensing Authority Officer for Hounslow Council and I'll be introducing the app, uh, report. Right, uh, and now Bill. Hi, uh, I'm Bill Lee, clerk to the panel. I'm essentially here this afternoon to back up Boundary with the, the notes for the decision. OK, and then finally, Belgique. Good afternoon, my name is Baljit Birdie from HB Public Law. I am the legal advisor to the panel. OK, uh, right. We also have officers acting in a, a, a producing role for the technical side of the meeting. But as they're not expected to be involved in the discussions of the meeting, I will not thank them now, but they will be included in the credits when we make the movie. Right. Um, Moving on, as you may well know, until recently, virtual meetings for council business were not legal. But as a result of the coronavirus pandemic and the quarantine arrangements required by government, the law has recently been changed to let local authorities meet in a virtual way to make decisions. Therefore, this meeting is taking place using the recently introduced government regulations. The way this meeting will work will be, as chair, I will be running the meeting and inviting people to speak. As it is very easy for people to speak over each other in meetings like this, I will ask each member or officer to speak in turn at the appropriate stage. This will mean that there, will, there should normally be no need for people to interrupt or ask to speak. However, I shall make sure that members have ample opportunity to ask questions and make comments on the reports and applications before them. The exception to these arrangements will be the legal committee or licensing officers, um, legal committee or licensing officers who may turn on their microphone to alert me to any legal governance or licensing issue that needs addressing, although I'd expect this to be rare, uh, be a rare occurrence. In addition, we have a producer at the meeting from our ICT department who may also contact me if necessary, but I think it's unlikely if all goes well, as we hope it will. The etiquette for the members of the committee and for officers who are expecting to speak will be to mute, mute your microphones until you are asked to speak. This means that only one person will be speaking at a time and there will be no background noise, making it easier for all of us to follow the meeting and also those watching at home. I will also ask members always to say who they are when they make a contribution and to speak slowly and clearly for the same reason. We have three members of the licensing committee with us today to form this licensing panel and it is we who will be making the decisions. Officers of the council will provide assistance and advice as required 
but the final decisions will be made by the members. Right, anyway, can I just uh, make sure that everyone's got their microphones muted? Um, right, members of the public are reminded that the agenda and all the reports being considered by the panel today can be found on the council website under the licensing panel meetings page. So if you want to see them, that's where to look. Also, want to make sure that all members have seen the agenda and reports. Uh, please speak now if you don't have them. You all had them yesterday, so I assume you still got them today. Uh, I would like to remind members of the need to hear all of the evidence in each report we are considering tonight. This means that you should listen to the whole debate. Please do not pop out to make tea, walk the dog or the cat or the budgery gar. Um, just make sure you're there for the whole debate. If you should find you're having any technical problems and need to log out of the meeting and come back in again, please let me know immediately, ideally beforehand, but if not afterwards by turning on your microphone. This would be a permitted interruption. We can then decide how far we need to recap if that's necessary or if the member needs to not vote on that item. Finally, I would like to say any member of the public listening and watching, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We hope that this meeting will go well, but any virtual meetings may suffer from an unexpected technical hitch. So please bear with us. I should also clarify that this meeting is being recorded and it will be made available on the Council's YouTube channel in the next few days. Contributors to the meeting are asked to remember that they will therefore be included in the recording of this public meeting. Right, thank you. We'll now move on to today's agenda. Um, we'll now move on to the license application for decision at this meeting. We have only one application to consider this afternoon. That is from Shell Garage, Gillette Corner, 882 Great West Road, Isleworth. Councillor Unser Chowdhury will be speaking as a local ward councillor. We will be allocating a total of six minutes to the objectors and six minutes to the applicants. Each may share their six minutes with their speakers as they wish. I will ask the legal officer, sorry, I'll ask the legal officer to alert me when we are approaching the limit of the allocated timings. May I ask all members, officers and public speakers at this meeting to introduce themselves each time they speak and to turn off their microphones when they have finished speaking. It is also important to speak slowly and clearly so that everyone can understand what you're saying. Finally, if you're making reference to any agenda documentation, please give the page and the paragraph details. I now need to confirm who will be speaking for the following. The applicant, um, it's Mr. Leo Chalambides and Mr. Corrigan Lockett. Are they present? Bill, yeah. Good, OK, right, we got them. <laughs> Other people who've made formal requests to speak have already submitted uh, valid written representations on the case. I've been notified that Mr. Lawrence Hawcroft and Councillor Chowdhury are here and we'll share the six minutes allocated to other persons. So I'm assuming they're here and on. Uh, <coughs> yes, Chair, um, just like to point out that uh, Mr. Howcroft is joining us by phone. So unfortunately, his name won't appear. He'll come up as a phone number ending 2171. Okay, got <coughs> that. Us, he he's the phone number today, so he's easily spotted. Yeah, I can see his number there. Yep. Right. Can I ask, um, uh, in terms of the, the order of the business, if, if either the applicant or the um, or, or the other persons um, decide to have in, an individual to have individual speakers or wish to have a single spokesperson. So if you could let me know at the appropriate moment for that. The process for this application will be as follows. The licensing officer to give their presentation on the application. The, applica the applicant will then be asked if they agree with the circumstances described in the officer's report. Next, I will introduce the ward councillor, Unser Chowdhury, who will be forming part of other person's presentation and will have three minutes to speak. 
Then Mr. Lawrence Hawcroft will have three minutes to explain his submission. There will be a chance to ask questions of them and of, of them and councillor Chowdhury at this stage. I will then ask the applicants to speak for six minutes and there will also be an opportunity for questions to be asked. Then I will ask all parties to sum up their position with the applicants being entitled to the last word with their summing up being the last to take place. The panel will then leave the meeting to discuss the case and reach its decision. They will be joined by the legal officer who is there to give his advice on the law. Once we have considered the application and reached a decision, we will return to the main meeting to relay our decision. If anything changes our estimate of the time to be taken for the consideration, we will pass that information to our technicians who will post a message accordingly on the screen. Right, I'm now ready to begin the formal meeting. So everybody comfortable? Right, so submissions to the meeting. Firstly, I call upon Councillor Unsa Chowdhury to introduce herself and to make her presentation. You okay, Unsa? Yep, I've just turned my video on, so I was just waiting for the mic and um, the live thing to move over to me. Uh, okay. Let me know when you're ready for me to start, and I will start. Yep. Well, I, I'm ready. Everybody else ready? Yep. Um, okay, off you uh, go. Chair, uh, Chair, this is um, uh, Mr. Mr. Verdi here. Um, I didn't know if you wanted the uh, Rita to introduce the report. Oh, yeah, miss that. Let's see. I don't know how I missed that. I'm sorry about that. That's OK. I'm happy to introduce the report, Councillor, yeah, when you're I'm ready. Yeah, OK. Yeah, sorry, Rita. That's OK. I seem to have jumped a few pages here. OK, no problems. Right, it's Rita Pancania, Licensing Officer. Right, Members are requested to determine an application for the variation of a premises licence in respect of Shell Gillette Corner 882 Great West Road, Isleworth, um, have, having regard to representations received and the requirement to promote the four licensing objectives. This application has been submitted by Shell UK Oil Products Limited. Uh, the applicant proposes the following variation to the application. One, to extend the sale of alcohols, uh, brackets consumption of the premises, 24 hours each day uh, to remove conditions 1, 2, 3 and 4 as so shown on Annex 2 of the licence that issued. These will be replaced with conditions detailed in Section M of the application and then to add a further condition uh, a reference in incident log as detailed in Section M of the application. Please note conditions 5, 6 and 7 will remain as shown on the current licence. Um, that's it, Chair, from, from me. OK, thank you, Rita. Uh, can I ask the applicants now um, if they agree with the circumstances as described in the officer's report? So, yes, good afternoon. Leo Charalambides, Council representing Shell. Um, yes, the report's great. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Right, now I will move to the ward councillor. <laughs> Sorry about that, Unsa. Are you there, Unsa? Yes. Yep. Yeah. You can, oh, you're up in the upper corner now. <laughs> you move from the bottom right to the top left. OK, right, when you're ready, Unsa. OK. Hi, um, I'm Unsa Chowdhury. I'm the local ward councillor for Austin Spring Grove. And I want to speak to you today about why I think you should reject the application for the variation of a premises license in respect of Shell petrol station. So the application says that it's, um, it is for the sale of alcohol for consumption off the premises. But where do they expect people to consume these drinks? There's no local need for local residents to purchase alcohol at the proposed hours. The location on the Great West Road is a gateway through fare for people travelling from Hounslow, often to reach other destinations. So they're most likely going to be the clientele. There's already a lot of litter along the Great West Road, along Zion Lane and Windmill Lane, leaving the local area littered with cans and bottles. I myself have patrolled the Great West Road numerous times, witnessing broken bottles, cans, 
and this will no doubt get worse if this application is approved. The application states that they will not sell single cans other than premium or craft beer. But how is this going to be regulated? Beer bottles are regularly sold as individual items. Are they seriously saying they're only going to stock multi-packs of non-premium beer? Stella, for example, they advertise as premium beer. Does that mean this will be sold as a single can? What about bottles of spirits? Are they going to be sold in multi-packs? What happens when the manager changes? I think this is a slippery slope, I'm afraid, and indeed the amount of packaging on multi-packs usually causes litter problems to be worse. Similarly, the people buying alcohol at this time will most likely be using vehicles to access the petrol station. Therefore, there is a potential increase to driving under the influence and an increase in incidents on an already busy and dangerous junction. And this is without the expected additional traffic to be generated by this proposal. The application also states that if granted, they would like to display bulk stacks, wine towers and chilled promotional offerings that I would argue are not suitable in such close proximity to schools. Surely reading these descriptions, they are clearly trying to maximise the amount of custom they receive on this front. Why else would promotional offerings and bulk stacks, which are usually discounted um, as seen in supermarkets, be on the cards? If the even larger Tesco store around the corner closes at 10, there is merit in the alcohol licence here replicating that and not being increased to 12. Um, and I'm not saying that we should change it from 11 to 10, but that there should be no change at all. So again, I ask that you reject this variation application. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Ansa. Right, have we now got uh, Mr. Horcroft, Bill, can we? If I take him and then I'll take questions for. Uh, yep, we should go. Um, are you there, Mr. Hawcroft? He's got his mic uh, muted. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon, Chair. Um, Mr. Hawcroft, if you could dial star six on your phone, you'll be able to unmute. That's done. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. You can hear me now, can you? Yes, yeah. Perfect. OK, should I let me know when to start? Well, if you start now. OK, my name is Lawrence Hawcroft. I'm the vice chair of the local residents association, OGRA. We, this site is a small petrol station kiosk. Uh, it is not an online, uh, uh, an on-site supermarket like at other petrol stations, and it is in a residential area. We believe this, object, this request should be rejected for five reasons. Crime and disorder prevention. The applicant proposes no facilities on the plans for cameras or other measures in the forecourt or external areas, simply cameras in the shop. There are no proactive proposals by the applicant to prevent crime and disorder. This is inadequate in controlling the responsible sale of alcohol on a 24 by 7 basis. Public safety. There, there should be a complete package of measures to ensure public safety when selling alcohol late at night um, after midnight. These are essential in the interest of public safety in this area, which is predominantly residential in character. The site is bounded on two sides by residential properties right next to it. The cameras and the overall package of measures should act as a deterrent rather than simply providing evidence after the event. Given the absence of such measures, this application is not appropriate. Prevention of public nuisance. Selling alcohol for, com for consumption off the premises has a high risk of crime and disorder, as well as making the premises an easy target from where to illicitly acquire alcohol. This, also, this availability also encourages street drinkers, as UNSA has just explained, with resulting litter, noise and public disorder. Yet the applicant has provided no details of additional security and prevention measures for the sale of alcohol at the petrol station, nor of any mitigation effects for the immediate re local residents. Number four, again, there is no evidence of any demand for the sale of liquor 24 by 7 amongst local residents. 
this site would be the only one in the area selling alcohol at the, the times proposed. It is inappropriate for a site in a residential area to seek to attract people in the area to purchase and consume alcohol late at night when people are trying to sleep. And finally, the protection of children from harm. This site is no more than a couple of hundred meters away from two schools, Nishcam and the soon-to-be Boulder School, which will have 2,500 pupils in. It is simply not appropriate to have a site selling alcohol 24 by 7 that close to two major local schools when this site is the only one in the area licensed to sell alcohol in those periods. Accordingly, we request that this application be rejected by yourselves as inappropriate in a residential area. Thank you. Right, okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Orcroft. I'm now going to invite the uh, members uh, to ask questions of Councillor Chowdhury and Mr. Horcroft. Shall I start with Councillor Georgi? All right, Adriana. Hi. Hi, thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. I would like to ask, uh, why would you like to extend the hours? What is the main reason for doing that? No, sorry, Adriana, you're asking questions of Unster Chowdhury and Mr. Lawrence Horcroft at this point. OK, That's I have a lot of questions for that now. Thank you. No, you. You have no questions for them. OK, no, can no. I ask um, uh, Councillor Kiani, have, have you had questions for? Uh, yes, uh, I would ask uh, one question, you know, uh, I think, you know, both the Councillor and Sa Chaudhary uh, uh, and uh, Mr. Lawrence, you know, they both stated that this premises is near the school. But then they have the permission till till uh, 11 o'clock, isn't it? You know, so another uh, hour increase will not affect the children because children will go home before that. You know, uh, so what is what is what is your answer to that? One? OK, well, I, 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 it would been my turn to ask a question, but you've covered my points. So I'll now switch to answer and to Mr. Horcroft to answer your questions. So, Absolutely. Okay, um, so one of the reasons about the school, although schools do close at a certain time and kids will most likely be at home, we can't guarantee children are going to stay at home. Um, but also the application request for um, additional um, advertising and promotional um, abilities, which they don't currently have, and that will be during the day and that will be when school children are about and they will be able to see this. So it's not just about the time, but it's also about those that particular aspect of promoting um, these um, bulk or towers or whatever, but stacks of alcohol put together with promotional activity around it. Okay. Mr. Holcroft, do you have any comments to make on the questions? Yes. In in addition, uh, the the applicant is not asking for just an additional hour um, of. Uh, of licensing time. They're currently able to sell alcohol up until 11 o'clock at night and then the next time they can start it is first thing in the morning. They're asking for a 24-hour license, so right through the night. There is no other place in the area that currently has such a license. So what that would become would be a magnet for people who want to yeah, buy Mr. alcohol Hall at I'm, night and I'm at any time. Mr. Holcroft, I was actually asking you to respond to Councillor Kiani's uh, questions, you're opening up the debate. Uh, I thought I was responding to the question, which was, no. um, could you repeat the question then? Because I thought that was the point. He was talking about the, the, the fact that I think if I might, be, well, I'll, I'll go back to Councillor Kiani. Do you want yeah. to repeat your question? Yes, I was only asking that, you know, that you, you are objecting that this, there's two schools near the premises, but uh, in my point, you know, the school will be closed uh, prior to that, and then they are asking for extension of these hours, okay, 24 hours, but at that time, the children will be, should be at home and will be at home, you know. Yes, my, okay, my point there is it, it makes that place a magnet for anyone who wants to buy alcohol even particularly when the school is open. At the moment, it is one of a number of places licensed to sell alcohol 
and then they all close round about 11 o'clock at night. If this is known as the only place, it becomes a magnet that starts attracting people and they go there during school time as well as late at night because they know that's the place to go to. That's our concern. Okay. It raises its profile and that I think is inappropriate for a place so close to a school. Right. Can I go right? It, is that it? Okay. Can I go back to the members? Um, Adriana, do you have any other questions to ask at this stage? Um, no, um, um, I have not at all the um, okay. answers I've, I've put on. Okay, Councillor Kiani, have you any other questions to uh, ask? No, for, no further question, please. Right, okay then. Um, right. I'm going to ask the other persons to respond. Uh, where am I now? I'm losing my place here. Uh, sorry, to, to respond to the uh, the questions. Um, hold on, these notes of mine are going up the tree. Yeah. Um, so now, I'm sorry. Um, we we've had the. Uh, Right, I'm, I'm now going to ask the applicants if they've got questions of the of the other person. So I'm sorry, these notes of mine have gone a bit haywire. Sir, thank you very much. We have uh, no questions for either of the uh, submissions. Thank you. OK, right, fine. Right then, in that case, then I move on to uh, the applicant to speak to their application. Uh, the applicants have six minutes spread, so you can you can you know one of you speak for both of you, or you can split it whichever way you see fit. Sir, thank you very much. I'll, I'll be doing the talking. Mr. Lockett's going to follow, and if he has anything urgent to add, he's going to WhatsApp me, so we try not to interrupt the flow. So, sir, firstly, just by way of um, clarification, uh, no doubt you and your colleagues will have observed that Condition 7, in respect of the bulk stacks, wine towers and chill promotional offerings, they are already permitted under the licence. That's Condition 7, page 20. So your local authority has already granted them during daytime hours, of course, when the schools are able to come into the premises if they so wish. Uh, secondly, uh, both the representations ask you to look at demand. Uh, you know full well, uh, and the government tells you, that the need for licensed premises and demands is an irrelevant consideration, and that's paragraph 14.19 of the section 182 guidance. So we're not um, we're not to, to look at those. Um, and then thirdly, by, by way of correction, I'm, I'm really grateful for the questions. Um, the fact is that schools are closed during the hours that we seek to, to open. Uh, but if you are concerned about our crime and disorder, our nuisance, our relationship with schools, our public safety, let's pause for a moment and consider uh, that this is a premises which sells age-restricted products, fuel, fluid, solvents, blades, tobacco, as well as alcohol. All of those things, in fact, there are no other stores of this type which sell so many age restricted products. And yet there is no history of uh, malcompliance or enforcement or any issues. And the simple reason for that is that um, we are a well run store and all the measures, particularly that the uh, Residents Association talk about, are in place. Uh, Mr Lockett has uh, advised Shell and other petrol stations for over 20 years. I've been their exclusive barrister for over 15 years, which I, I can't quite believe has happened, but nonetheless it has. And in that time, we have had not one single review across the country. Think about that for a moment. We operate 24 hour premises with age restricted products in difficult circumstances, and we have had no reviews under the Licensing Act 2003, a fact for which my bank account is much the poorer, but Shell is much the richer and your communities are much the richer. Uh, under paragraph 8.48, um, we are encouraged to work in partnership. 
all parties are expected to work in partnership to ensure that the licensing objectives are promoted collectively and these translate into conditions. We have worked in partnership with your crime and disorder expert and we have at page 29 and 30 agreed a list of conditions. So this application is made in partnership by Shell and your local police. Your local police are saying to you today, please grant this license. I have worked in partnership with Shell. I have agreed CCTV conditions. I've agreed measures to do with spirits. I've agreed challenge 25. I've agreed no single can sales, beers and so on. And we are asking you to grant this application. Uh, so you have that application from us and the police. Paragraph 9.12 of the section 182 guidance tells you that you must listen to the advice of your experts. Your expert police officer is saying they can do this. We want them to do this. You should grant this license. So in terms of the fears, by way of, um, I'll just address those quickly, CCTV. We have internal and external CCTV. We have full lighting. We have full coverage. Um, it's not shown on the plan because the plan, of course, deals with the licensed area. But all our pumps, as well as the surrounding area, are covered by CCTV. Uh, we have full measures in place. Uh, you'll see that we are regularly trained. The training is refreshed. The records are there. The staff are trained. Uh, care is taken uh, to ensure that we meet all of uh, the particular uh, concerns. So in terms of uh, who comes along, who's there, they are covered. In terms of uh, crime and disorder and the concern about street drinkers, I, I just have to say, um, we're really quite expensive. Even our promotions are expensive when you compare them uh, round about. And so the fears around street drinkers, about people that just want to get that little extra after they've already been out on a lash when they don't have any money left, they're not going to come to Shell. They're not going to come to Shell because of the bright lights, the cameras and the expense. And the fact is, nationally, we do operate a system where you can only buy multi-packs. You can't get uh, high strength products, even in premises where we don't have those conditions because we are committed uh, to that. Uh, so the concern around nuisance and street drinkers is just not uh, met, um, nor are the other concerns because they are fully covered by our operating schedule. Let's not forget that our operating schedule has been granted by you after a contested hearing. This premises has been open without any issues during the day when we are busier uh, and we are now able uh, to operate and offer a further offering to the community and to our uh, customers on a wider basis. So given the lack of objection, given the partnership application made between us and the police, I would urge you and your colleagues to grant the application as requested. I think I've come under time, which is marvellous, given that I was in a review for six hours yesterday. Barristers coming in under time is a rarity. So um, congratulations on your systems for making us work like that. So thank you very much. Over to you for questions. Right. Fine. Um, Adriana, do you have any questions of the applicants? Um, yes, I do. Um, as I as I had first question, it was what is the main reason? Why would you like to to apply to extend hours? I have heard your opinion, but I want to know why would you wish to purchase with this um, extended hours? So we're already open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, the Section 182 guidance does indeed say that if you are a store, matching your hours of operation with your hours of licensable activities it is appropriate. I'm not going to deny that, of course, commercial considerations to that, as well as staffing, but it's about offering a full convenience service uh, to our patrons. Uh, so when you come to our store, you can ask for all of our products and be, uh, and be given that. Have you had um, uh, requirements from your um, customers to extend hours or have you seen an increase into um, um, alcohol purchases over the, over the 20, 20, over 11 o'clock in the night? So at this site, we've not sold alcohol after 11 o'clock, but the premises that do sell alcohol after 11 o'clock operate fully functionally as a convenience store. And it really depends on the local area and on demand, uh, but the company policy is to offer the full range of all our products across the 24 hours where that's permitted by local authorities. 
Okay. I don't I don't have demand data because we're not required to provide it. And in fact, the government says that looking at demand is an unlawful consideration. So that's why I don't have that, that, those figures with me. OK, thank you. Um, if I have any other questions, Chair, I will um, I will raise my hand. Thank you. OK, Adriana. Uh, Councillor Kiani, do you have any questions of the applicants? Yes, I do have. Um, uh, okay. Apart from CCTV, would you be providing uh, any other security measures at the premises? So at the premises, all staff are trained. Uh, they do have uh, external links if they need to. After 11 o'clock, where there's single staff, the main door closes and people aren't allowed in, uh, so it's all recorded. They're also trained in respect of dealing with conflict and difficult customers. Uh, they have their refusals books. The refusals books are checked regularly. So what we check, for example, is if someone's uh, making too many refusals, we look at that and think, well, you don't have confidence. Why is that? If they have too few refusals, we also check them because we think they're being uh, being lax. And our refusals books covers everything from fuel and petrol all the way through uh, to uh, to alcohol. Um, each of the stores is checked by its manager, the area manager, and then the wider region uh, for compliance. They need to keep doing refresher training, which is constantly updated. So for example, during the COVID emergency period, all of Shell, and I know Mr Lockett's been involved in this, have been had their training reviewed because of deliveries. We've suddenly had this explosion of deliveries, uh, which uh, happens from other sites. Uh, and so what we do is we is we train them to look at that. So it's very much an interactive ongoing review of our security measures. Uh, the lights are important. Don't forget there's often a cash machine on our uh, forecourts. There's often fuel on the on the forecourts. Uh, so they are all in place in order to ensure that the most up to date um, training on security is held. And we also engage with the local uh, enforcement authorities. If they inform us of particular issues, we respond back to them because uh, to be perfectly frank, we don't want street drinkers. We don't want antisocial behaviour because it's also bad for business and bad for the community. So we're on the same side as the residents and the local councillor saying we don't want those kind of people in our local area. OK. Um, Chair, can I ask uh, just a supplementary question on that? Yes, of course. OK. Um, uh, uh, how often so, do you sorry, think... Sorry. Sorry, Chair. Uh, sorry to, uh, to interrupt. This is Belgium Bird here. But just to let you know, I lost connection at my point. So when uh, Mr. Shalom Beans was providing his answer about um, uh, just after he was saying about uh, having a refusals book and the, you know, if they were having the chain of supervision, um, you know, reviewing the court and everything, my system froze. And so I think I was out for about a minute. So I thought I'd just uh, mention that so long as the, the panel were all there and present and heard everything, then that's fine. Uh, but if there's any uh, thing in particular that you wish to repeat, uh, Mr. Sharanambidis, uh, that you said in the last minute, then obviously I didn't hear it. As long as the, the, the councillors heard it, that's the main thing. Uh, and they can ask me for advice if need be. But I thought I'd better bring that to uh, your attention first. Can I say, uh, Baljeet, that uh, I think that, um, um, that it, it, that the conversation actually continued around the same subject and several parts of it were reiterated in there. I don't think there was any new matter um, introduced in that period when you uh, were offline. Um, well, Chair, that, that, that's perfectly fine. So long as everyone is happy with that, the applicant and uh, any of the objectors are quite happy with that. Like I said, I'm I'm not the main person. It is the panel who will be making the decision yeah. after consider everything. I'm, look, but I'm looking to see if any heads are being sh shaken, but I can't see any. At okay. the moment, no. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Melji. Right, thank you anyway for enlightening us. Uh, right, I'm sorry. Did you have anything further? You asked for a supplementary. Yeah, I was asking for supplementary. You know, um, I was I was saying that you know you said you know the your staff is trained. How often would you uh, check the records? Uh, is it weekly? Is it four? Uh, you know, fortnightly. So, uh, and uh, how do you um, uh, uh, make recommendations, you know? 
So with, with, with training, all of the staff are trained firstly by a DVD that's provided by Lockett & Co. There's also an external source and then there's a refresher course. You can't do any of those and you're not allowed on the till unless you pass all of those courses. And so the training records are kept on site and they can be looked by any of your responsible officers. They are refreshed as a minimum every six months. But when new things happen, so, for example, when we had uh, issues, I mean, we've never sold those, but when we had those laughing gas canisters, whenever there's a new issue, lock it and co on top of that. And then they sort of provide fresh training as a result of that. So it could be that there's more there's there's there's, there's more training. If they fail their training or their retraining, they have to do it again until they pass. Uh, so there's that. In terms of the refusals log, they are looked at at least once a month, often more frequently and signed off. So if we're finding that someone is particularly challenged, the examples I gave is if they are not refusing enough or they are refusing too much, that tends to ring alarm bells for one reason or the other. Then someone will go in and check uh, where we are with those. Uh, and naturally we have incidents books and they can report, report to us any particular challenges that they that they might have. So the training is very much an ongoing process that continues throughout the year. Right. Um, right. Okay. Thank you, Chair. I, I have no further question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, right. Well, I've I've got a couple. Um, but first of all, I think I ought to um, interject on PC uh, Pello's uh, behalf. I don't think I can read anywhere in here where he's saying he actively supports your application. He's actually, you know, or enthusiastically, which you seem to imply. Um, and I wouldn't want him to be in trouble with his inspectors or anything in that basis. He's made a report where he's asked for a number of items that are quite common uh, with our committee to be uh, to be put in place. Um, and he's made those. It, it, it's not up to this committee to say, that's it because the police have recommended you, we can accept those or we can go on further than that and still make our condition. We are not bound by what PC Pillow says, um, yes, other than it is a part of it. So I really needed to make that clear. Uh, well, secondly, um, can I just um, check with you, regards to, I'm a bit concerned about having a single person on at nights. Um, what format, I mean, in terms of, um, under the sale of uh, alcohol acts, um, do they have specific training that, that covers that? So, so yes. So when um, so all all sites are risk assessed, uh, both for the safety of our customers, uh, the people that work for us, uh, and also for insurance purposes. And so as a result of that, after twenty three hundred hours, when there are sales at night of alcohol or of any other products, the front door is closed. And so you can only serve through the hatch. Uh, so there's clear signage about uh, hatch sales and so on. Uh, so the staff are trained where they are single man stores, which is a very common feature that they can only sell alcohol uh, through, uh, through, that, through, through that hatch. It works, we've not had issues with it. Where there are issues, which is very rarely, then we risk assess further and we uh, incorporate uh, further staff as needed. Okay. Can I just ask, um, are these individuals who work at night, are they um, personal license holders or is this delegated down the line to them? It's normally by delegation, though we have personal license holders at many of our stores. I don't know if this one, if this one does. Uh, typically they're not, but they would need to be trained in terms of uh, restricted goods of which alcohol is one. So there's the that the alcohol sits within the wider package of training. So they know uh, in terms of proof of age, uh, asking for ID, uh, looking for our APV limits, compliance with all our conditions, all of that is covered with the uh, with the training. OK, right now, that's I think that that finishes the councillor's questions. I'm now going to ask um, Councillor Chowdhury and Mr Hawcroft if they have any questions of you. Are you there? Right, uh, Councillor. Um, I was actually going to raise the same point that you did, Councillor Foote, about uh, well, don't do it again then about the police and it perhaps being a misleading comment. Um, so something that I'm uh, uh, I would like to hear more about is um, how you're going to support the local community in terms of. So we've raised about the litter 
the likelihood that that would increase. I know you've said that demand is not one of the reasons, um, but you have also said that demand is one of the reasons that you would think about how you would do things and obviously based on your business and um, whatever. But um, like you said, that's not relevant for licensing. However, it, public nuisance is relevant and the increase of litter, which we have seen and which we will continue to see on the roads that I mentioned, if this license is granted, um, what would you do to address those points? Um, in terms of the CCTV, as we've said, that uh, you said would it be acting as a deterrent. In what ways will it act as a deterrent? Um, and you also mentioned that. Um, something else, but I've, it's gone for me right now. Sorry. So just those two points, please. Thank you. If, if, if it comes to you, interrupt me by, by all means. So, so with, uh, with CCTV, having a well-lit forecourt uh, means that we get clear images. All our CCTV is designed so that we can get at the very least uh, vehicle re uh, recognition. Uh, we also very often have uh, facial recognition. Uh, so when, uh, when you come onto a store like that, uh, you know that, and that does tend to have a, a deterrent effect uh, and that's why the police request a CCTV. In terms of litter we agree that we don't want to see litter because it doesn't look nice for us or our local community. We are acutely aware as are the local residents and indeed as the government is because we'll be familiar with paragraph 2.21 of the section 182 guidance which talks about individual responsibility under the law once you're away from the premises. This is why uh, we have litter bins on site at entrances and exits as required and we work with any community schemes that look to clean up the, um, the local uh, wider area uh, but, but rightly uh, litter bugs uh, are, a, are, are, a, are a scourge and other than promoting things like clinic campaigns and working with the local authority uh, there is not much uh, that we can do. Uh, certainly uh, this application has been reviewed by all of your responsible authorities only one sought to work in partnership uh, and make the suggestions that they did. Uh, both um, uh, Steve Pello and Paul Richards uh, have uh, effectively said this operation is uh, this operating schedule is fit for purpose and com are, are commending it to you. Um, I can't do anything else with, with, with the silence of the others. If there are any local schemes, uh, I would urge the councillor to contact or, or indeed the representative of the uh, community association to contact the store and our local manager and we as assess those and do participate when appropriate. OK, um, Mr Hawcroft, are you there? Do you have any questions of the applicants? Yes, I have two questions, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, the first, uh, are you there? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, go on, go ahead. Yeah. The first question is on litter. I listened very carefully to the gentleman explaining how they're quite happy to work with us. Um, but to date, we have had zero cooperation from Shell uh, we operate a litter collection service in the area. Uh, we have collected literally hundreds of bags of litter, 95% of which is bottles and cans of alcohol. So I'd like to hear what Shell are going to do to help in that area. And my second question is the statement that there have been no incidents uh, at all at the station. Um, and I'm not quite sure, I'd like the, the gentleman to explain how he defines incidents because we know there have been cases of the police being called to the station. We know there have been cases of people stealing stuff from the uh, shop and running. These to us sound like incidents, which will get worse if you're selling alcohol 24 by 7. Those are my two questions. So, sir, in respect of litter, we have uh, litter bins. We also have our own litter pick. Uh, we have at least two a day uh, uh, around our forecourt and the immediate vicinity. Uh, very happy to take the information about the local community litter, litter pick and, uh, trans and, and feed that to the manager and the area manager. Uh, in terms of incidents, what I'm focusing on, uh, perhaps rather technically, and so apologies for that, is incidents that might be said to contribute to undermining the licensing objectives directly. So things like common uh, shoplifting and, and, and the like um, may happen 
they do happen, uh, but we're on top of that. What I would say is that the proposed hours, given that we are going to operate from 11 until 5 with a closed door policy, uh, means that those types of incidents won't be uh, won't be uh, happening. Uh, and that's why we put those measures uh, in uh, in place. So as far as I can see, what we're looking to do is provide you with information on how we promote the licensing objectives, effectively putting to you our best practice. Our best practice has been put out in our operating schedule. It's been demonstrated over the way in which we've operated in recent times uh, continue to operate and indeed uh, comes with the uh, endorsement of the crime and disorder experts which are saying these conditions will work to promote the licensing objectives 24 7. Uh, so their endorsement is effectively that high in that they are saying we have no objections We've worked with the operators. We think they can promote the licensing objectives. Of course, the ultimate decision, sir, is yours and your colleagues. Right. OK. Um, I'm going to. Oh, sorry, is somebody trying to get in? I can hear somebody. No? OK. Um, right, I'm going to move on uh, now just to ask if there are any other questions of uh, of the applicants and I'll, I'll go back to the councillors first any other questions you wish to ask um yes i would like to know who is your uh, dps a designated premises supervisor um corrigan can you text me the name of the dps please uh, i think the current dps i don't know let me just check if it's on the current license um, yeah, um, another question. The on the current premises license Oh, it's um, I think for data protection reasons, councillor, the um, the name and address of the DPS on page 17 has been blanked out. OK, uh, maybe our officers, they can check. And also, were you buying your alcohol? Have you checked if they got um, a WRS? You know, the scheme that alcohol wholesaler registration with yes. the HMRC. Absolutely. Yes, I can confirm that all our wholesalers are, are registered with HMRC for VAT. And I can see Mr. Lockett on my screen. I don't know if he's visible on your screen, uh, yep. smiling and, and nodding his head. Yeah, yeah. Can I, can I just uh, intervene there, uh, Adriana? Yes, there, I mean, you will note all the way through these reports that there are a number of areas where the data is redacted. And that is for data protection and that we're required to. Yes, I'm aware of that. Thank that. You. So, okay. yeah. Can I, Councillor, yes. tell you who, can I tell you who the DPS is? Yeah, if you, if. if okay, if, if you have no read that, if you have verified that. that, it's fine. Yeah, I've got it and it's verified on the licence. So Naveen yeah. Nathan Mukhan Gandhi. Okay, that's fine if you have verified that. Yeah, okay. I'm okay for now, thank you. Okay. Right. Um, right. I, I've just got one question, and, and, and that is that I, I've searched through the papers, and I, I'm not saying it's not there, but it, I, I have not been able to find it. But anywhere where you've actually, in writing, accepted um, the conditions that PC Pello put down there. So, can I just get them categorically in the minutes of today that you have accepted them in total? Sir, absolutely. It would be very bad faith in partnership working if having reached agreement with him, I pitched up today and said, you know what, I don't want them. But absolutely, uh, page 29 and 30, completely accept those with no amendment and with no reservation. You, of course, have the power to amendment if you wish. Uh, but no, we're not we're not we're not stepping back from from that at all. Thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of anyone else? If not, um, I'm now going to ask. Uh, um, Sorry, uh, Richard. Yeah. Can I ask uh, what kind of uh, prevention and awareness do you have for public uh, nuisance, especially at late nights? Because um, sometimes can happen when people pull up their cars and can they can disturb the residents. So what measures have you taken in regards to this matter? OK, so the way we operate nationally is we're kind of aware that sort of cars can come in. Uh, so uh, in terms of engine noise, uh, we encourage our customers not to loiter to reduce engine noise. Uh, we reduce light levels as required, though, of course, light levels are part of our due diligence as a petroleum supplier. Uh, we uh, review 
uh, litter. Uh, we look at, for example, whether plastic gloves are being thrown uh, hither tither. Uh, if necessary, we have speed bumps coming in and out. Uh, again, it depends on the local circumstances in the in the local area. Uh, we continually monitor through our incident logs, which are reviewed every month, to see what sources of incidents might be occurring uh, and in terms of any adverse impacts. Because as I say, we want to continue running this 24 hour premises as an asset to the business and above all an asset to the local community and one where you councillor and the local residents are going to come and use us for petrol and for convenience goods. And so it's in our interest to ensure that we do so in a, in a neighbourly way. So we're constantly keeping that under review. And as and when situations arise that we need to address, we address them. And that's why I believe we've never had a single review, because the moment a legitimate complaint arises, Lockett and Co get on top of it, they get in touch with the manager, the area manager, it gets escalated all the way to head office and we find a solution. That's how we operate. Uh, so that's why I can confirm that that's what we're going to do at this site as well. Thank you for answering. Thank you, Richard. Okay. I have no further questions by now. Okay, well, I'm now going to ask Mr. Hawkoff and Councillor Chowdhury and the applicants if they have any final comments. Uh, you cannot make any new comments, only summarise what was contained in the original presentations. So first I'll, I'll go to Councillor Chowdhury and Mr. Hawcroft to ask you if you wish to summarise. Um, yeah, again, I just want to some, um, say that I would request that this application is rejected. I, I don't think that enough um, has been demonstrated to show how it will work well in the local area. Um, I don't think it's suitable for Austerley. I don't think it's suitable for Hounslow in this particular area. Perhaps somewhere else they could consider extending their hours, but not in um, Austerley. It doesn't work for us locally. It will, as I said, lead to public nuisance. There will be increased litter across the area. I'm not actually satisfied by the response that we had in terms of um, supporting Ogre with the litter picks because that hasn't happened to date. I'm not sure what will change. And litter picking outside the forecourt is their own cleaning and that's something that they should maintain but my issue is not with the littering around the full court but the littering that um, would extend from the full court into Osterley into Hounslow um, so I request that you reject this application. Thank you Unsa. Um, did uh, Mr Shawcroft have anything to say? Yes please. Yeah I'm waiting. Uh, very quickly uh, I I concur with everything that Councillor Chowdhury said. This petrol station is in a, a residential area. Um, there has been no engagement with local residents. It is completely inappropriate to sell alcohol uh, overnight from 11 till 5 uh, and use it to attract people into the area when people are trying to sleep. In addition, all the measures that have been outlined by the applicant in terms of security are all passive after the event measures. There are no proactive measures to reduce the incidence of antisocial behavior, noise, etc. This is simply not appropriate for a residential area and I ask that you object this application. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, the applicants, do you have any uh, uh, any summary that you wish to make? So very, very briefly, you and your colleagues are clearly an experienced licensing panel. You will be aware uh, that the uh, councillor and the local resident are straying into areas of concern which are outside the remit of the Licensing Act 2003. I've highlighted some of those uh, and I'm no doubt that Balgit will be able to advise you further. So this is a residential area in part, but it's also a transit area and it is an area which has a long-standing established 24-hour petrol and convenience station. The government guidance on uh, hours is that alcohol sales should match hours of operation. That's 10.13 to 10.15 of the Section 182 uh, guidance. Uh, we have an operating scheduling place that can promote the licensing objectives. There is no evidence to suggest otherwise. We have a good history of doing so, both locally and uh, nationally. Uh, so given that the uh, review of this uh, application has been conducted by your responsible authorities, uh, your police have uh, concurred with us that our operation operating schedule is fit uh, and no one has complained otherwise I'd urge you to grant the application as requested so thank you very much right right 
And OK, it only remains for me to say thank you to everyone for your helpful comments uh, throughout the meeting so far. Um, I'm now going to ask our legal advisor to clarify the procedure for making a decision and what options are available to us as the licensing panel. So over to you, Belgique. Hello. <clears throat> Hi, thank you very much. Uh, what will happen now is that the panel will uh, uh, go uh, to a separate private meeting where they will consider the application and decide what decision to, to reach on this. Uh, I think the proposal is to uh, adjourn for a short period of time to enable that them to do so. If it transpires that uh, uh, a longer period of time will be required, then they will come back and inform all those present so they're not waiting unnecessarily. Uh, the uh, options uh, open to the panel are also set out on page one of the agenda papers under section 1.0 which is to grant the application in full and on the terms contained within the application to include any applicable mandatory conditions uh, two to grant the application uh, modified to such an extent as considered appropriate to satisfy any relevant representations and promote the licensing objectives or three to reject the application in whole or part and so uh, with that being the the case uh, the panel will now adjourn uh, for a, uh, a period of time. Um, uh, Chair, uh, sorry, my camera just turned off there. Uh, Chair, is there um, uh, any particular uh, period of time? Um, I suggest 15 minutes, would that be appropriate or would the Chair I, like more time or, or, or less? Initially, I'm looking at my watch, but um, yes, I, I would be saying 15 to 20 minutes initially. If that proves that we've not been able to reach a decision, then we have a connection with our technical advisors uh, via via the uh, my mobile phone uh, where we would advise them if we think we've got a chance of reaching a, a, a solution um, later uh, or within reasonable hours and that will be posted up on the screen at that stage if it looks like we're going to be going on a long time then of course um, what we'll do is we will close the public side of the meeting we will continue to make our uh, to reach our um, hopefully reach our conclusions, which then we will then have to go back to the normal uh, five days uh, of written notice. I hope we don't have to do that. I'd much rather we can come back and let everyone know what our decision is this evening. Right. Um, but that's yeah, that's where we are. Uh, so all members now, if you can um, log out now from from here uh, using the means and then go into the login for the private screen and we'll see where we go from there. OK, uh, Chair, before this is Belgic Verdi again. Um, uh, before we do so, I've currently got uh, 1606 on my laptop computer at the time. So if we say 20 minutes, so um, it's just come. So if we say 1626, uh, we'll aim to log back in. I would encourage all those other people uh, present waiting to be near their co uh, their computers and laptops so that if the panel concludes their decision earlier or there's any other issue that comes up that may extend the time limit that uh, you are all uh, nearby so um, can easily retrieve. Uh, with that said, um, if the chair uh, would like to adjourn the meeting then um, we'll move to a uh, private meeting room. Right, OK. Now we all need to log out. See, Belgique's gone.
Your back in. Sorry, Chair, you're on mute. We're back. Thank you. I'm sorry, uh, Chair, you're on mute. Uh, Richard, we can't hear you. If you can hear me, we cannot hear you. I'm giving it off in a minute. Yes, because I was muted. I, I didn't look that way. Um, right, yeah, I see that. Um, yeah, Belvedere, uh, Adrian, Bill is here. Who, are we missing anyone? Rita? Yeah, Rita, are we missing or is she? No, not? no, Chair, I'm here, but I've not got the camera on. Oh. <laughs> are you going to switch your camera on or are you getting, are you blushing? <laughs> right no you've no need to be blushing that's for sure <laughs> right we so excuse me chair we do seem to be missing uh mr Holcroft, um Holcroft, rather. Right. um okay. but of course we can always notify him so i, I don't see that's a, a reason not to continue uh, but he does seem to have disappeared okay i see um answers here yeah. I'm yep. still there. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Can we invite him, uh, or is he a necessity to do that? He was. He was on by telephone. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Adrian, can you help us? I'm just looking. I'm not number. sure if we can actually dial him in. Yeah, uh, Chair. This is uh, Mr. Verdi speaking. I mean. It, 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 there's there's no um, actual need for him to be here. So if, if if it's up to the panel if they want to try and contact him again, or if um, they wish to proceed. Well, we have passed the time we said we would return. Um, so um, yeah, I'm a bit. There's not much I can do about it. I, I I would prefer that he was there, but there's nothing I can do about him not being there. So, OK, if everybody is ready, uh, we'll move on and um, give the decision. Right. Anyway, I'm going to say uh, to give the decision, uh, which was that the panel have approved the application with the additional items on page 29 and 30, which is from the police report. Um, and I, I, I think that's it, isn't it, uh, Belgique? Is there anything else I need to say other than uh, you will get, of course, the full um, report in writing within five working days? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, Chair, that, that's correct. A uh, full um, written re um, reasons for the decision will be given within five working days. Right. Other than that, unless anybody's got any uh pertinent and begging questions i'm going to thank you all for your attendance and uh declare the meeting closed thank you chair thank you, chair. Thank you, chair. Uh, thank thank you. you. Bye.